Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 23 of the AI series where we're going to implement an instant cast ability, the Ice Lance. How that's going to work is we're going to set up a scriptable object that allows us to configure how many Ice Lances we'd like to shoot, and we will use those as instant cast abilities so we will not disable the enemy movement like we have done in the last two skills. Which, by the way, if you've not checked out the last two videos, I highly recommend you check out those because we're building on the foundation we built in 21 and we modified some in 22 to generify some of the common functions that we use on the base skill scriptable object. So we have to write less code to accomplish using our abilities. There's links in the description below, so I highly recommend you check those out if you've not checked them out already. More advanced users may just check out the GitHub repo and look at the base scriptable object to understand how it works as well. The way this skill is going to work is we'll check first if we're not using any other abilities or within range, all the stuff we've been doing so far. Then we'll also check if we have a line of sight to the player. So in AI series part seven, we first implemented a bullet. So if you've also not checked out that one, I'd recommend checking out AI series part seven. So we'll reuse that bullet component we did there and use that for our projectiles, and then we'll set up our bullets in the scriptable object and fire them off with some delay in between them so we get a really nice cool effect where we're shooting multiple ice lances while we're still moving. And again, we're using this just as an example of how to implement an instant cast skill. You can do any kind of thing you want in here. This is just the example that I hope you can take the foundation that we're learning here and apply it to any instant cast skills you need. And before we go any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, add value to more people, and that means that more people are making their game development dream become a reality. If you want to help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash academy. You can get your name up on the screen, you can get a voice shout out, and some other cool perks. In case this is the first video that you're watching in this sub-series about implementing enemy skills and abilities, we're using the free Unity asset Unity Particle Pack, which is actually made by Unity, to generate some of these effects. When we open up the Unity Asset Store and search Unity Particles, it's this first one, Unity Particle Pack, we import only the effect examples and disable everything else. It gives us a warning saying it's going to override our project settings, but if we disable the last checkbox here about the project settings, it won't do that. If we open up the Effect Examples folder, find the Magic Effects Prefabs, we'll drag in the Ice Lance to see how this looks. So it looks pretty cool, it shoots out a large ice lance thing. It has a shatter effect and also has this little trail and some smoke and some mist or something like that. In this one, we're not gonna use that particle system because what did we see? We saw that it was just shooting a projectile that had a trail and some frosty effects around it. And we already have code in place to use and shoot projectiles. So I'll drag a bullet prefab into the scene. I'll drag the ice lance as a child of this bullet. I'll unpack that prefab so that way I can delete some of the stuff because I really only want the mist. Then I'll select the model and change the model to be an ice shard. And when I click on a couple of the different models, I end up landing on the ice lance low. That one looks kind of the best. The other ones are more the shard particles, I think, an explosion like on contact particles. So this one is the highest quality looking one. We're going to use this one for our projectile. I'll scale this model to be something like 0.5. I'll then select the root bullet object where we have the capsule collider and I'll readjust this to match the size of our new bullet. I'll also rotate the model so it's facing the right direction and kind of center that inside of our capsule collider. Then I'll rename this bullet to be called Iceland Bullet. I'll drag into the asset folder as a prefab variant of the bullet. Then we'll open up the scripts enemy skills folder and create a new C sharp script called Iceland skill. If we open up the Iceland skill, we'll make it extend the scriptable object class, just like every other skill. And we'll add a public int lances to shoot, which is going to be the number of these ice lance bullets that we want to shoot whenever we use a skill. I'll set that to two by default. For the public float delay, set that to 0 0.25 by default. That will be the delay between shooting each lance. We'll put a public float range, set that to 10 by default. That'll be how far away from the player we should be before we can consider using this skill. A public poolable object pre prefab, that'll be the Ice Lance prefab we just made, 
a public layer mask, line of sight layers used to determine if we can actually see the player. If we don't have line of sight, we should not shoot these ice lances. Much like we do with the range attack radius, we'll add in the public float projectile radius and public vector 3 bullet spawn offset. We'll add the create asset menu attribute with the file name of ice lance skill and a menu name of scriptable object slash skill slash ice lance. So we can create this scriptable object from the unity editor context menu. As always, we'll start with the public override skill scriptable object scale up for level that accepts the scaling in the level. We'll create a new instance of the ice lance skill. We'll scale up the base values passing in the scaled skill, the scaling and the level. And then we'll assign all of our ice lance specific variables like lances to shoot, delay, range, prefab, line of sight layers, projectile radius, and bullet spawn offset. And then we will return the scaled up skill. Next up, we'll define the can you skill, which is the public upright bool can you skill enemy enemy player player and int level. We'll return base dot can you skill, passing in the enemy player and level, and remember that that checks if we're activating the cooldown and if we've unlocked the skill yet. And we'll check in addition to that if we're close enough. So if vector three distance player transform position enemy transform position is less than or equal to the range. And we also want to make sure that we have line of sight to the player. So we'll say and has line of sight to passing in the enemy and the player transform. This function is going to behave the exact same as the range attack radius does. So check for your line of sight. We'll do if physics.spearcast passing in the enemy transform position plus the bullet spawn offset for the starting location, the projectile radius. Then for the direction, we'll take target.position plus the bullet spawn offset minus the enemy position plus the bullet spawn offset. And then we'll normalize that. We'll pass out a raycast hit with the hit, pass in the range and the line of sight layers. If that hits something, then we'll check if it has a damage will component on it. So we'll define an I damageable damageable. We'll say if hit.collider try get component I damageable passing out the damageable. If that returns true, that means we did hit something that has a damageable component on it. And we will return the damageable that get transform is equal to the target. In any other case, we'll return false. Next, we'll implement the use skill function. So public override void use skill accepts the enemy and the player. We'll call base.use skill passing in the enemy and the player. And if you actually only wanted to shoot a single ice lance for the skill, we would not have to start a coroutine. We could do it all in this function, but because we want to make it a little more complicated where we can spawn multiple ice lances for this skill, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing that we've been doing in all the other skills with enemy.start coroutine. We'll make shoot ice lances be the name of the coroutine passing in the enemy and the player. We'll define a wait for seconds wait to be a new wait for seconds with the delay. And we'll say for int i equals zero i less than lances to shoot i plus plus. We'll set the enemy animator trigger to be enemy dot attack trigger, which is private on the enemy. So let's hop over to the enemy real fast, change that to be a public const string attack trigger. And then we'll call this function to shoot ice lance that and pass in the enemy and the player. That way we've kind of separated out the instantiating of the prefab and all of that kind of stuff. And we'll implement that in a second. Once we spawn that ice lance and it's going to do its thing, we'll yield return the wait to wait for the next time that we should shoot an ice lance. And after we spawned all the ice lances, we'll do use time equals time dot time and set is activating to be false. Since this is an instant cast skill, I don't want to do those things that we were doing in the fire breath to disable the enemy movement. That's not required because they should be able to move and shoot or I would like them to move and shoot. You do the exact same thing we did in the fire breath to disable the movement if you would like them to have to stop to shoot. Now let's define the shoot ice lance function. We'll go private void shoot ice lance that accepts enemy and a player. We'll do object pool pool equals object pool dot create instance which remember as of last video will now give us a reference to a shared pool if we've already created an object pool with this prefab. We'll then do poolable object instance equals pool dot get object. We're pretty confident that we will always get an object now so I'm not going to do the null check on this one and just do instance dot transform dot set parent enemy dot transform and say the world space coordinates from before do not stay. I'll set the instance transform local position to be the bullet spawn offset, the instance transform rotation to be the agent's current rotation. I'll do instance dot get component bullet dot spawn passing the enemy transform forward, the damage and the player transform. I just noticed that we also need the bullet speed. So I'll scroll up to the top and define the public float bullet speed. So that to 10 by default. We'll also add bullet speed to the scale up for level function with scaled up skill dot bullet speed equals bullet speed. We'll refactor this so we have bullet bullet equals instance dot get component bullet. Then we'll assign the bullet dot move speed to be the bullet speed and then we'll call bullet dot spawn.
If we hop back to the Unity editor, I'll right click on the project panel, create scriptable object skills, ice lance. And in the inspector, I'll assign the line of sight layers to be player, default, and floor. I'll drag our ice lance bullet variant to the prefab. I'll change the cooldown to five, the damage to 10, and the bullet speed to one. And I'll leave everything else alone. I'll select the basic enemy and assign them the ice lance skill. And if I click play, we'll see the enemy starts coming down the stairs. As soon as she gets line of sight and the five tag cooldown is up, she starts shooting these ice lances and they go off in the wrong direction. I actually did this intentionally in this one because we're using the agent transform forward as forward. We're not making the agent look at the player before using this skill because then they would have had to stop moving first, right? We would have had to disable the enemy, make them look at the player, start shooting and then re-enable the enemy and I didn't want that to be how it worked. So the occasional time where they shoot out in the wrong direction for me is okay. If you want to prevent that from happening, you can use the direction vector between the player and the enemy as the forward whenever we do bullet.spawn and pass in. You could do the same code that we did with the physics.sphere cast, passing the target position plus bullet spawn offset minus enemy transform position plus bullet spawn offset. And that would give you where they're always shooting towards the player, not forward for the agent. But I think this looks pretty nice. These ice lances fly out pretty quickly. They've got that kind of frosty effect following them around. And whenever they make contact with the player, they deal that damage. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video and you understand how to implement this ice lance ability where we're shooting multiple projectiles at our player. And I hope you also understand how to generalize that to work with any instance cast ability using the framework that we've done so far in the last two videos. If you have been getting value out of this video or the series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tuesday and sometimes on other days too. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing AI into your game, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.